to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. James. Oh, yes. Ooh, winter Ooh. is upon us. There's a nip in the air, a little chill out there, and I'm feeling pretty white. I'm feeling pretty pasty. Oh, yes. That's what happens. Dry. Very dry. Pasty. Red. Hibernation weight. I look like, uh, I feel like I look like Steve Bannon. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Skin peeling, just red, just kind of well, uh, Bannon... itchy, dry. You know, he always looks dry and itchy where you're just like, oh, God. Um, that's how I feel right now. And the only thing that would maybe be change it, maybe change it, maybe. And this is a hard maybe. Let's see if I got a little sunshine on my beehole. Oh. <laughs> We're going to talk about it, James? Sure. It's not your beehole, hole but yeah. What? Tell the people your name for it because I... It's not my name for it. It's the scientific... Short. Perennium. Uh, for... For the gooch, The taint. gooch, taints, and beehole, hole right? Does, it, that ex- does that extend to the beehole? hole Hamster walkway. Uh, gerbil catwalk. Is gerbil what catwalk, I really like. yeah. Um, yeah, perennium. Mm-hmm. What about it? You're kidding, right? Josh, Josh Brolin? Yeah. Um, if you don't follow Josh Brolin, a lot of people that say this to me. I said, uh, hey, Ross, you and Josh Brolin are the only two actors I follow because you guys just don't give a fuck and you will literally post whatever. Yeah. I started following Josh Brolin because so many people, I heard it from so many people, but I always hear the Goonies thing of like, hey, you look like Josh Brolin anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started following him. It's fu- he's fucking hilarious. And, and you're right. You don't give a fuck. So I saw this picture of him buck naked on his Instagram holding his feet like a baby on the ground above his head with his asshole and taint pointed towards the sky. It was a sunny day, wherever he was. And Is this on there right now? Yeah, yeah. Go and look it up. See what okay, it says. Okay, go ahead. Um, continue. Continue. So. Uh, I thought I followed him. I guess I don't. He says. I gave the hot new wellness trend perineum sunning a whirl with disastrous results, and it left my pucker hole sunburned. And is that his hair now? Uh, I guess. We have that long hair going on. He's doing a, look, that guy does 80 movies a year, so who knows? I'm sure. Either way, he's pimping enough to pull off all looks. Um, So... I'm going to continue with this, Jabes, because I've not heard the term pucker hole in my life, and uh, I I never knew I needed it until today. My pucker hole is crazy burned, and I was going to spend the day shopping with my family, and instead, I'm icing and using aloe and burn creams because of the severity of the pain. Um, And this, again, this is what he wrote underneath that picture. And he goes, I don't know who the fuck thought of this stupid shit but fuck you nonetheless seriously so you guys do you're a lot alike you two i i feel yeah i feel we are so i was scroll so i scrolled a little bit right okay i saw the asshole shot yep he's just doing the happy baby pose correct uh happy baby yoga pose and in the bright (laughs) bright ass sun yeah on the sand and you, I mean, just looking at the picture mm-hmm. makes your butthole hurt. Because you're like, if you sat that way for any length of time, right. shit's getting burnt, right? <sighs> so, and I don't know if, I don't know about this craze. I don't know about this. Like, I think he made that up. No, that that is not. So this is, this is a whole, this perennium sunning thing has become a thing. Oh, okay. And, um. I know Lena Dunham does a vag, vag sunning. Oh, God. Why? If anyone wants to. Who wants to, to fucking go down there? I don't give a shit if her, her goddamn labia is tan. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go down there and see that mess. I don't think you want a tan labia. I want a tan dick. I'd take a tan dick for sure. I don't um, think it matters. Tan labia. 
Eh, it depends. Everybody's got their own colors that they like mm-hmm. for certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, dead serious. Yeah. Uh, I had a, I've had multiple friends who were just like, dude, I only like black girls because it's, it is a different color down there and it's awesome. Sure. And I'm like, yeah, all right, cool, man. Right. Fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, tan in your lady. It, de- it depends. It depends on what the rest of the area looks like. Sure. So. Sure. I don't know. For Lena Dunham, she's probably just rich and bored. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what she does down no. there. Nothing's... You ever sun nude? No. Really? Mm-mm. Not once? No. A lot of people do that. Even in the tanning bed, I'll keep a Come on. Keep underwear on. For yeah. real? Mm-hmm. I, so... I, like a la- I like a line. Like, I like to be able to see the difference. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I like a tan line, personally. Oh, boy. Because this is, by the way, this is a real story. So oh no! This I, perennium sunning thing. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Is is the insanity that people are swearing by, and it, and they're all they're saying here is it's just a mere thirty seconds of sunlight on your butthole, and you will receive more energy from this electric node than you would in an entire day of being outside with your clothes on, says influencer who goes by raw on Earth. That's R A on Earth. Now, um, is this now this was the viral video that kind of st- like started it, right? She got you know thirty five thousand views in a day, or he or she. I, I don't know who Raw on Earth is at this point. Mm-hmm. Man, woman, sure. Though, why is the W? The silent? lines are blurred these days. Yeah. Uh, so Raw of Earth also has posted a step by step sun worship exercise pulled from the Tao of sexo- Sexology, the Book of Infinite Wisdom. By Dr. Stephen T. Chang, that says the practice can help keep the area healthy and free of germs. So, um, boy, this this goes on to say: thirty seconds of direct sunlight injection to the anal orifice is equivalent to being outside in the sun all day. Um, one Californian claims that butt chugging vitamin D uh, also not, not only helps her sleep but uh, regulates her hormones. That's not real. Is that is that a real. real thing? That is real. This is all in uh, the New York Post, so I'm reading that aloud, verbatim, word for word. Uh, I've never put vitamin D up my rectum before. Should I? No. Okay. Okay. No. A, you should only be getting vitamin D, I think, from the sun. If you can't get it, I guess take some supplements. But Vitamin D really only is beneficial if you get it from the sun, out in the sunlight. Man, uh, the, the photos that are accompany this article here are worth their weight in gold. Um, sure. Just these people, these fucking idiots, Douchers, man. Douchers, dude. Man, it's crazy. Douchers. So I, I scroll down. There's a picture of Brolin with Matt Damon. Matt Damon looks, like I told you, like a dad. Yeah. He's a dad. Yep. He has a polo. Shirt on, buttoned up. Yeah. You know, his Ray-Bans in the thing. He's going to the park with the kids. Yeah. But he has a beer because he's, he's at a party, but he looks like he, he's just about to go to the park with the kids. Sure. Brolin's standing next to him in a trucker hat, stains all over his very worn-in T-shirt. Bing, he's bing. flipping off the camera Is on the really? other side of Matt Damon. Oh. And you just go... That's Brolin, you know, like Brolin. Are we can, fucking best friends and we don't know it? I think so. I mean, I think you guys would be because I think you both in these circles, like you go to parties in our neighborhood where everyone is moms and dads, right? Sure. And you I'm are. A dad too. I mean, you're a dad too, but you would be flipping off the camera. You talk about some off color stuff. You yeah. are you are drinking, you know, drinking the brown liquor, yeah, yeah, yeah. having a good time, Absolutely. getting the party, children's party going. You know what I mean? The children getting are in another people, room. Yeah. Getting people yeah. really into it, whispering in the ear, you know, the things and jokes you can't say out loud. That's you. Yeah. People taking a picture, you're, you know. Sure. You may not be flipping off, but you're definitely making like a weird face. You know what's and funny like, though is three what was it last week? Amiri was here? Yeah. Fucking boom, bird up. And uh that was I posted that on Instagram and didn't, didn't think anybody about it. And and a friend of mine from Columbus from Columbus, Ohio mm-hmm. was just like, Man, I wish I could fucking do that. My 
bosses and shit watch oh, yeah. my Instagram and whatever. And they were like, you can literally do and say anything you want. And I was like, I can all day long and I'm I, like, I'm going to. And it's awesome. And I, I just guess. wonder, I know this party. I don't know what this party was, right? That yeah. Matt Damon and Brolin are there. But I know that probably people are acting a little bit more buttoned up. Sure. Than they do because that's how you're. That's how people act now mm -hmm. in Hollywood. Whereas B Brolin's back in the day. Brolin's back in the oh, day yeah. when you didn't have the Instagram and you didn't have the shit and people went, you know, these Hollywood oh, yeah. rich ass people got together and just fucking did blow and like had stains on their shirts yep. and wore trucker hats yep. and like did whatever the fuck they wanted to. Yeah. Brolin's still there. Everyone else is like, we have to have... We need to be hireable. I miss it, man. We need to be woke. I miss it. Yeah. And he misses it, too. So where's who's the tragic person? I'm not sure. I don't know. I, look, I don't know if Matt Damon is like. Brolin is. You're right. Brolin is old school. And he gave his wife, you know, his ex-wife a rap on the beak if she got out of hand. Um, <laughs> Diane Lane. Uh, they're divorced now. He remarried a, what is she, 27, 28 very years old? Very young. A very young gal. Whatever. Who I, took his name. You know, Diane Lane wasn't going to take nope. that shit. You know goddamn well the new one She's would. out of here. So yeah. he took, he got a younger one that Ugh. would take the name, keep her face out of the fucking limelight, yeah. right? Yep. <laughs> Stay home, dress cute, and let him do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Yeah. Which is weird shit. Brolin's going to be Brolin, dude. Brolin's going to be Brolin. I think he still drinks. What do you think? Yeah, he's fucking rocks. He gets rocks, though, right? I'm yeah. not sure if he's on this, like, sober path or what. No, he's not on the sober okay. path. Okay, okay. Like, he'll post, like, I shit with him tell. on, like, glasses of wine and okay. drinks and whatever. And, okay. You know, um, I think the sober path was, again, a couple raps on the beak and uh, some domestic shit. Uh, he also got arrested in New Orleans uh, for a fight at a bar, which, man. Very shy -a. Sort of uh, Just very old school um, I like it Yeah Whatever man uh, I mean not the rap on the beak part for the wife If you can get away with it I guess but, I have um. to say real quick <laughs> We saw Peanut Butter Falcon We did Shia LaBeouf I'm very excited for Honey Boy as well Yep Shia LaBeouf Yep Is a talented mother fucker He's great And I watched his And that's uh, all I'm gonna say And he shut down production he got arrested on, on that, that on that on movie, that yeah. movie yep. and it was a very small budget and I was mad at him because I'm just like, come on, bro. Here's the weirdest thing to me, right? So all I kept thinking but about because I, I knew that it. that was the production he got arrested on mm -hmm. and got shut down and all this shit. Yeah. Here was what weirded me out because the movie was great. Um, so good was that the lead is a person who is mentally retarded. He has Down syndrome. He's Down yeah. syndrome and. How do you get that fucked up that you're going to shut down production on a movie, an independent film? People have spent, it's probably a three to four million dollar, three to five million dollar movie right there, right? How are you going to get that fucked up and shut down production on a movie where the lead is a, is a kid with Down syndrome? He doesn't mean to. He has an issue. And I think, here's the thing. <sighs> I think Honey Boy will answer all your questions. It probably I think will. Honey Boy will answer all the questions that you've ever had about Shia as far as like what his fucking problem is. Why does he do all this stuff? I think it will be explained. And then you said on Hot Wings, that show that we love. Hot Ones. Hot Ones. Yes, hot that one, ones yeah. that we, the, the show that we love. Yes. They eat Hot Wings and have conversation. Shia was on there. Yes. And you said he, he was thanking the. Uh, no, no, no. He was uh, at an award show and he thanked the cop in Georgia who arrested him. Okay, so that's it changed his life. the cop. Um, so, so what I will say is this, is I I, I went back and rewatched, uh, well, not rewatched it, because it kept popping up in my queue, whatever my algorithm is on YouTube. I went back and watched Hot Ones, where I skipped over it before with Shia LaBeouf, oh, after, yeah, that, after I saw like, Peanut Butter be... Falcon, and I was like, man, it, after that award show, because we talked about it on this show two or three weeks ago, is he different? And then he gave this... It's it's got like 11, 12 million views on on YouTube, and I was like, oh, it must be awesome. Or he was off his fucking rocker, right? One it, of the it two. It was actually the opposite. He was awesome, and he was a great dude. And he went over everything in his life, and he was unbelievably honest. Where I was like, oh, Jesus Christ! And some of the things that he did that I I thought, and you thought, and probably the world thought he was crazy for, it was for something else. 
Um, do you remember those videos of, of him like <laughs> clapping and doing all that shit on the green screen? The oh, mo- yeah, the yeah, motivational yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. shit. It turned out that all of that, they were like, he's like, how do you, the guy was like, how do you feel about it being like a human meme, you know, essentially for all of this stuff? And he goes, I love it um, because that was what that class was. He said he had taught a class at um, NYU or somewhere yes, in New York. that's right. And he goes, one of the classes was memes and how to create art and is a meme and art in today's culture. And so they shot all of that stuff with the students on the green screen. And he did a million of those, he said. And he goes, they all got released into the world to see what would happen. And he goes, man, I, they're still going to this day. And he goes, tell me a meme isn't an art form. And I was just like, it was very thoughtful. And right. you were like, oh, shit, man. I thought he lost his mind in a movie theater. Remember when he showed all his movies for 24 hours in a row and he stayed? Mm-hmm. I, it might have been two days straight, actually. Mm-hmm. He rented out a movie theater in New York, screened all of his movies, put yeah. out a tweet to the fans and just said, hey, if you guys want to watch every single one of the movies I've ever done, I'm going to be watching them with you. And he sat there and like he was crying. He was laughing. That's right. It was, how cool. It, it was awesome. And that was an, yet another social experiment of like, hey, for this thing. And things like that, I, I, you wonder – if people are on the verge of a meltdown or if you're just trying to figure shit out in life. Or if you're just trying or... something new. If you're smart enough and you are sensitive enough, if you're talented enough, all of this bullshit can't be enough for you. Like the bullshit of just like, you know, the press and the putting the right picture up and the yeah, yeah, yeah. all this shit. For someone like him or Josh Brolin or whatever that is so different. Mm-hmm. And smart. I don't know how smart Brolin is, but he's really smart. <laughs> is he? He's a very smart guy. Okay. Look, look at his family. Um, yeah. Obviously, his dad's been famous forever. Barbara Streisand's been famous forever. He's no dummy. He's no dummy. So he's no dummy. But anyways, yeah. If you are, if you have that much going on, that much feeling, right? Yeah. If you're off a little bit, because you have to be off a little bit to be that good too, right? Yeah, I'm fucking off. Right. Like I'm out of my goddamn mind, probably. Right. And so you you have to have something. You need to do something different, right? You need to shake it up. You can't just be. So he he's all these yes. things. I thought of it that way when I saw it, except for him, you know, getting arrested and being fucking wasted. But at the same time, again, his family is gnarly and his upbringing is insane. So that kind of explains that. But then all these other weird things, in my mind, I just thought he's just trying to like shake like he's going crazy in this normal box of bullshit yeah 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 that everyone else is like cool with right it's wild it's wild either way um the this fucking asshole thing was really funny he's really funny uh the shia labeouf movie was great peanut butter falcon is great i highly recommend it uh he was great on hot ones i i think he might be back in the sense that like he is personable enough that he can go out and do these interviews and shit. And if he's as honest as he was on that other interview that I saw, I think he'll be back very quickly, actually. So we'll see. Right now he's doing indies and things like that. And I don't know how to navigate the rest of it because, you know, even today with the Black Widow trailer dropping, uh, fucking A, it's the same character from the same Marvel movies that we've seen for 30 years at this point. I don't think Shia LaBeouf would be happy in that world. No. So that's what I'm saying. Like, so, keep him in the indie world, sober enough, whatever. Give him cool shit to do. He um, did say he was sober, though. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he kind of has. I think there are certain people in the like, world have that have yeah. to be. Yeah. Um, because as you see, anytime he goes out. So with like Peanut Butter Falcon, I bet he went out for a drink and literally ended up in fucking jail do you know what i mean like that there are some people that the escalation from your beer of like i'm just going out for a drink the escalation to either you know getting a prostitute going to fucking jail all of that yeah is inevitable your mind just literally switches yeah (laughs) and you have all the best intentions right and then it just like falls apart so so i think he should be sober but he he needs some other things to fill that 
that void because he's a fucking crazy motherfucker. Yeah. Um, and so is Shia LaBeouf, by the way. I, there was a, this is my last meant, quick but, story. Yeah. Oh, Brolin, both. Both of those guys are fucking crazy. But it seems like Brolin can have a drink now and then. I don't know. If I'm not hearing about Brolin in the fucking back of the cop car, sure. he clearly has gotten something under control, whether yeah. he Ubers or he keeps his anger in check with uh, perennium sunning or whatever he fucking does. Right. He's trying all those things so that he can at least like have a little bit, <laughs> right? So that he can at least go to this Matt Damon party and like... Yeah. Only get wasted once he leaves, right? Only meet up with friends like once he leaves the party, which guess, is what respectable man. people do. I guess. Uh, it's all fucked, t- you know, to me. You know? Yeah. Burn, let's burn it all down. Sure. Burn it all down. Sure. Um, we watched The Irishman. Speaking of good movies that are original and uh, not the Black Widow type shit. Uh, mm-hmm. It was a three and a half hour movie. Martin Scorsese. I was in it the entire way. Jesse Wiseman, ladies and gentlemen, was in it and up the entire way. Till like midnight. Yeah. On you, a school night. You were fully invested. It was perfect. Yeah, it was a great goddamn movie. It was perfect, movie. but, you know, for my money, if it's going to be a gangster movie, Italian New York gangster movie with real people yeah. based on real events, Scorsese is the best it's incredible i don't know how that oof, i look I, I love the joker um and the only reason we went and saw it obviously is because it was a joaquin phoenix um and it wasn't like a goddamn comic book movie but uh, i mean there were some things that were i still have questions about in the irishman again oh, oh perfect. well yeah, yeah i mean the sets were perfect it was not cheesy in one single way which with that kind of movie Anyone else in the hands of anyone else would look like a school play. You know what I mean? Yeah, Where they're doing my, a gangster movie. It was perfect. My my only gripe, and I told you this throughout, was I I wish the dates just They some, had more dates up. And then also who was just he talking Who was bottom. he talking to in the nursing home? And I'm not giving anything away when I say that it starts with Robert De Niro, old in a nursing home telling this story. Who's he talking to? I think he's Talking about his entire life and then reliving But he it. won't tell the cops anything. So Correct. is he just kind of talking to us? I don't want to give it away. We, we probably talk about it off air, but... Uh, no, it, you can It say. felt like a story that he wanted to share finally and was okay. talking about it. Okay. Um, to who? <laughs> Bless you. Is that for debate? <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, you know, I knew it was based on a book, so... I'm assuming it was the guy who was writing his book, but right. but I don't know. Um, but it was great, and I we we talked about this a couple of shows ago. I was not put off like I I'd, I'd forgotten that De Niro was like a shit bag in real life. So like he was great in the movie. The movie was fantastic. Yeah, we had talked about it before, right? Yeah. Are we going to be able to separate? I was. I didn't think people. about it one single Pacino second. Pacino is the best ah! in. The business. Ah. And he even toned down that a little bit and played his character. He's just so fucking good. He's so good. So I think that will um, probably win a lot of Oscars. I'm still going with uh, Joaquin for Best Actor. Yeah, I mean. Maybe throw Pacino in there supporting. And, right. And give him that. Um, yeah. And then uh, move on about your bidness. But the cool thing was th- that I liked is every – other scenes somebody popped up where you're like ah, of course they're in there oh yeah <laughs> it was definitely like oh, okay good <clears throat> oh okay okay like yeah it had all the people in one, a scorsese film that you would want one was uh harvey keitel who I, he's one of my favorites that i don't see enough of and i i've always loved him i just god damn that guy is good so good um and he just did an interview that just said, look, man, I think he's 80 now. Really? Uh, yeah. He looks great. Looks great. But he's 80. And he was just like, man, thank you to Netflix because nobody wanted to make this. Like, literally no one wanted to make this film. Which is true. I knew about it for a long time. Why, though? It is a drama. It is not a high-paced. No. 
There's definitely a lot of movie before stuff happens. Yeah. I'll say that. So, you know, you want to get invested in the characters and all that stuff. And to do it that particular way, I don't I don't know. If, if you're not Scorsese, that movie doesn't get made. It just doesn't. For sure. And then you've got to have 900 people to sell it overseas and all that other bullshit. But, um, you know, he, he went on to say, look, man, it's just it needs to be more creative and more you know, less comic booky and all this. Same with everybody else that's saying, and it's just like... I know, but good luck. I know that's what we... I know. It seems like that's what everyone wants, but it's not true. But it's weird. It's, it's, weird, it's weird because the last two movies... Uh, and Oh, and I also said we would talk about this as well, of, of whether or not I enjoyed watching it more at home or in a theater. Oh, yeah. That movie, I enjoyed watching at my house better than I would have in a theater. In a theater? Mm-hmm. Why do you think that is? The pacing of it, the the pacing it of the movie, slower, slower. I, which I don't mind. I, I I enjoy movies like that. Um, one of my best friends, uh, Clay Crawford, one of my favorite. He's done a bunch of movies. One one of my favorites of his is a movie called Steel City, which is slower than molasses, but it is just great acting performances, and uh, I just enjoyed the shit out of it. I don't know. It looked great. The acting was great. Super slow and. Um, I don't want to see it in the theater, but I wanted to see it at my house. Same with this movie where it's just like, all right, cool. I think on a big screen now to sit there for three and a half hours for a, a drama like that is, that's a big ask yeah, Wolf these of days. Wall Street was different because it's very fast paced, yeah. so fast I, cuts. I, I tried to think of one of that caliber, that speed pacing wise. Pacing wise, I mean, as far as like movement, action, all, all that other stuff, uh, it's like a common Hollywood term. But um, and the the only one that came to mind was Hateful Eight, and Hateful Eight was three and a half hours as well, and that was Tarantino. Okay, I saw it in a theater. I loved it in a theater, but there was a lot of killing and some other shit towards the end. But the pacing of that movie is really slow. Um, but for whatever reason, but the payoff is worth it. Yeah, but for whatever reason, the way uh, there was an orchestra that started before the movie started, and then at the break, they had a break in the middle of it, mm. and you had ten minutes to go get re snacked up, which was awesome. But they played you out with like this old timey orchestra music that was amazing, and I was just, I felt like I was almost, I don't know, how to play or something, mm. and it was just like, oh man, this is. Amazing. Um, and I think of the environment they were in in that movie, of how cold it was. I felt cold. I felt cold the entire time. And I felt every time the door opened, I was like, shut the door. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, whereas with the Irishmen, they're in a bunch of different locations in New York and Miami and some, some other things. And it was just like, all right, cool. There wasn't a weather element to me where some of those movies I'll get caught up in mm-hmm. just because of where they're at. Um, but that didn't do well at all. Um, I think it made... I don't know, 65 at the box office. And everybody said the same thing. Like p- people bitched about that movie. And I, I still can't believe it where it was just like, eh, nothing happened or whatever for hateful eight. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, if you didn't like that, you probably won't like this. Yeah. For probably sure. won't like the Irishman. Um, but I enjoyed watching it in my house of like, all right, great. Take your time with this because I, I don't know where to be. I have no one to worry about behind me. Mm-hmm. I have no babysitter to worry yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, that's true, huh? And you can fully just get into it. Into it, and I was in it, and it was um, it was an enjoyable pause it experience. When you need to, like, yeah, yeah, because it's long. And when you get into something like that, like again, Tarantino at least had a break in his uh, right at, at one forty-five. You know, you know, you're going to get like candy it. and other stuff, and it was great. But uh, this, you didn't have that option. Um, but I think. I think this will probably win Best Picture. Okay. Um, I don't know how you beat that. You know, there's some other movies coming out. You've got the Roger Ailes movie, obviously, which they've recut the trailer, which I don't even... It's a thriller now? <laughs> no, I thought it was, like, more comedic. Com- well, you did, but then it says, this is the thriller you've been waiting for in the yeah, trailer. Yeah, but then they have, like, like fast one-liners from movie. the ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think they're trying anything they can basically at this point because the rest of them have bombed at that pace and like yeah. so but but still that one's supposed to be up for a bunch of awards the Irishman the Tom Hanks movie Won't You Be My Neighbor um, which after the documentary I really don't 
Yeah. Uh, and then the Richard Jewell movie I want to see. Yes. So, um, we'll see. I would see. see that one, maybe in theater, just like date night style. Yeah. But I know with Eastwood, you're getting a 140 movie. You're getting 135, 140. Oh, yes. An hour and 35, 140, and you're... See ya. Yeah, you're out so, the door. So, that I like. <laughs> you know so, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. But that was the difference, and uh, uh, yeah, interestingly enough, with, with you know, because this Harvey Keitel thing goes on, this, this article goes on, he's like, look, man, I'm disappointed that it took somebody like Netflix... And then it's not in theaters. You don't have the traditional experience anymore. And that's dying. And that's sad to me. But, um, you know, they made the movie where nobody else would make that. Right. So what do you do? What do you do at that point? I don't know. Um, Think ne- Netflix. Yes. Yeah. I and if you're, if you're Disney with all these Marvel movies, now that you have your own app, what's to stop you from just making these for your app and not – same as Netflix. Stop putting them out in theaters. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it saves the risk of it bombing. Right. But they want to be considered for awards. I don't think Disney does. Well, but Netflix does. Netflix does. Yeah. 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 But I I think the Disney doesn't care. Here's what I think. The awards will change. And this it started off in in TV shows a long time ago. So usually a full season of, of TV was 22 episodes and that you had to. To be considered for an Emmy or a Golden Globe, you had to be 22. And then it moved down to 12. Uh, and then it moved down to 10. Now it's at 8. And it's like eventually all this shit will change. Um, and that's just kind of the way it is. So I think all of this will change. Yeah. Um, but look, the sensitivity of, of everything that's going on, you know, fuck, even this goddamn. Um, Can you hand me that water while you're here? Uh, you didn't even this goddamn uh, Gabrielle Union thing. I mean, it's crazy. Thank you. That's crazy to me. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I know how I feel about it, but at the same time, they only go through women on that show. <laughs> huh? They only go through women on that show. What do you mean? So it was uh, Heidi Klum and Mel B. They got fired. Well, Mel B got fired because of the divorce shit that she was going through. Right. And she was having a threesome with the nanny and all that shit. And then he- Heidi Klum, what? I think Heidi just Klum. was over it. Done. Yes. I, here's my personal opinion on Heidi Klum. She is richer than anyone else really knows. Mm-hmm. And I, I, think, I just didn't think she needed the money at that point. Where I think that other show, Project Runway, that she yeah. does. I think that had just gotten renewed for something else. And it was just like, man, she's gotten like 19 fucking kids. Something crazy. She's got like six kids. Heidi Klum? Yeah. Yeah, if you're rich, I guess you That have come out of that vagina. Um, so, so she was just probably like, yo, man, between so the six kids and this other shit, like, I understood it. Howard Stern was pretty blunt when he took the job. He goes, look, they backed up the truck and just dumped so much cash into my lap that I can't say no to this job. And he loved it. He said it was like a transformative situation for him. Like, really? he's different from that show. That's yeah. funny. Um, so he loved it there. Uh, so then they hire Julianne Huff yep. and Gabrielle Union. Yes. They both get fired. What was Julianne Huff fired for? Do you know? Um, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, she's saying it was a she's not saying anything because she still has a show on the network. Uh. So her response to it was can't wait for to, you know can't wait for the next season of so you think you can dance you know what i mean that was her response she was like i'm staying i'm staying in this machine smart smart either smart or she didn't feel the toxic environment that gabrielle union felt and well we we should describe toxic because she reported it right yeah jay leno was on the show Mm -hmm. as a guest host or what is he what do you yeah he was like a guest host he made some asian like a racially insensitive joke towards asians which they ended up not airing airing i mean they they know well enough to cut that out right that wasn't good enough for her she wanted it taken all the way to hr HR, and what jay leno gets canceled what the fuck does he care do you know what I mean? Look, what Jay, did you want to have done to Jay Leno, Gabrielle Union? So here's the thing. I, 
I'm not a big Jay Leno fan. I never have been. Um, but he is a comedian, and he's a stand-up comedian, and he's done stand-up consistently for 40 fucking years, right? Yeah. He's one of the first You're going to miss on jokes. Uh I, I especially in a live setting, especially with an audience, especially with no script, like you're gonna say shit. The Asian thing, as, like, and it wasn't crazy racist or anything like that. So, like, again, I don't even know what it is. They don't even have a clip of it to show because it was thrown in the trash. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. So even when they're talking about it on E Entertainment or any of this stuff, they don't even have a clip of it. Right. Well, I mean, not that they would show it does exist out there, but um, I'm sure. But uh, so there was that Uh, she didn't like that. Simon Cowell uh, smoked in the theater inside. So they have their desk like this. It's a huge theater. Yeah. Up high. Um, Audience is huge around them. He on breaks in between whatever smokes. It's whatever yeah it's not a super confined space it's gross but look you are he simon cowell is the creator the executive producer yeah the head bitch in charge of the show that you came on that you were hired for season your first season yeah there you already have three complaints under your belt is it a toxic, I mean, I would hate to be saying all of this and have it be like a seriously toxic environment for women, which is what people are saying, but I don't know if I've heard anything else besides that, and I don't know what more I should say except for that I feel like she thought she was a bigger deal than she is. Well, I, thought, I think she thought she was unfireable. I think that she So she claims she claims here that the some of her choices for her hair and wardrobe she was criticized for being too black. Yes, I think um somebody said but they did it to Julianne Huff as well they said. So like her hair wasn't good enough, her clothes weren't good enough. They were just always criticizing all of these shows you do, all of these movies, somebody will make a decision on your hair and wardrobe. It right. is not you. I can tell you that on all of these big budget movies I've done, it has to be approved by the director or someone else other than me. I get very little say in right. anything that I got to do. And that's the fucking gig, dude. Yeah. That's it. I mean, it. I don't like if they said that her hair was too black. I mean, they could say other things. I don't I, know I, why. I, I they highly need to doubt s- they said too black. Maybe too ethnic. Maybe too hardcore. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't yeah. know what was said. That's the thing. But I will say I don't really like her that much. I never really have. Um, So that's kind of where I'm coming from with it. But I don't really know what happened. But I think that the one thing I will say is that I think that she married someone that was very famous, right? Yeah, she married uh, Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade. Yeah. And I think that she thinks she's better or bigger. It's a Chrissy Teigen thing, like you said. Yes. You think that you are someone because you married someone. And uh, look, it's not really how it works. No. And to me personally, with with, with all of this shit of like, I'm, I'm telling her, I don't like this, I like this, and this. It's like, shut the fuck up. You're making so much goddamn money on this show. And it's a... It's a talent show where you're just watching people with weird talents. That's your job, dude. That's it. Um, to me, it just sounds like she wanted a bitch just to bitch. And again, I think if this was the only thing that happened, mm-hmm. that she was constantly complaining about Simon Cowell smoking, right? Which is what he does. I, I, if again, that was the only thing that happened... I think that she should be fired. He is her boss. He is her boss. If he wants to smoke, he can smoke in and the workplace. And if it is a toxic environment for women, just know that girls going in. Yeah. And I guess I guess you're going to have to know that. Said some of the facts that it's illegal to smoke inside buildings in Los Angeles. Is that true? You yes. sound like a fucking narc, boring bitch. She's a fucking narc. And 
Howard Stern came to the defense of them and just said, well, it is a boys club over there. I will say this. Howard Stern has hated, hated Jay Leno for years. So any chance he can jump on Jay Leno, he will. Look, and I and actually, fine, probably like, it is a boys club over there. It probably is, but... How has there never been one complaint about Simon Cowell all of these years? I think there probably is a couple, but... I, I'll be real. Like The ones that I heard back in the day, right, was that everybody was like, dude, he's, if you were just cool, like a fucking cool, normal person, you know? He's cool with you. Yes. But it's the same way in any work environment where it's just like, you know, there's always going to be a Karen in the sitch. I think she's a fucking Karen, dude. I don't, I think uh, people don't like hearing, like, keep, you know, stay in your lane. Keep in line. Just know, know that you're, knowing that you're replaceable. Like, her and Julianne Huff both got replaced. Um, I don't know what that means, but that's what it is. Yeah. It's a bunch if of you want to make it something or, it's a bunch more, of sensitive little babies is what it is yeah that think that they're fucking entitled yeah. to everything um and you're not but you you know what you are entitled to a ghost bed from ghostbed.com you, forward slash drink it bros are you entitled to it yeah I mean, yeah you yeah, are sure you, you want to pay for it yeah. if you want to pay for it you're entitled to it and Gabrielle, you should have it. yeah we're not giving it to you for free you Sorry. can have the gift of sleep like the stars at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. You can, Jabes. You can have that. Uh, there are 36 month pay as you go program. Best in the biz. A lot of people took advantage of that Black Friday sale and just housed it, dude. Housed it. Um, there will be a Christmas sale coming up again. Uh, if you're military or a first responder in this world, you get 15% off the everything in the store forever. Their pillows are amazing. Their, their adjustable bases are amazing. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and get yourself a mattress. Do it. Sleep's Do it. so good, it's scary. Do Next it. up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. Boom, 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 boom. Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. Uh, drinking this all throughout the holidays. Five hours worth of energy plus. Shit, probably last six hours. Uh, here it is, kids. Tasty, tiny little tin pouch. Subscribe on YouTube, by the way. Uh, we've merged with Drinking Bros Podcast. We are all there now. The media company is there. Jesse's working on a new show there, uh, hopefully. What? And, uh, ho- uh, hopefully. I, we've been yes. trying to get you get you on another show, too. Um, this is it. Tasty, tiny, little Tim Pouch. Strike See Force Energy. See if I step, stay in line, huh? Yeah, dude. Fucking Gabrielle <laughs> Union. Talk about a boys club, guys. Gabrielle look, Union over here. I know what I got got myself into uh, for Rock, sure. Rock smoking weed in the fucking office. That's a vegan in North Carolina. Fuck you, James. <laughs> Can you imagine? Late. Yeah. Later. Uh, Strike Force Energy will get you going. Four amazing flavors: grape, ridge, lemon, orange. Uh, twist it open. Squeeze it into any liquid available. You are good to go for six mother grabbing hours, dude. No carbs. No sugars. Try to stay lean during the holidays. It's tough out there in these streets. Go to strikeforceenergy.com, <laughs> promo code REVOLUTION. 20% off. Last but not least, we got straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give it to me. Oh, you like it? Yeah, I sure do. You could have been fired. Gabrielle Union could have fired you for that comment. Gabrielle Union can't fire Don't me. Don't worry. I won't air it. I'll try to get you fired. Um, <laughs> your comment. I'll take it all the way to HR. It's so insensitive. We don't have an is. HR. We don't have I an am HR, the HR here. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, we're good the then. HR. We're good. So I think we're fine. <laughs> Jobless. You know what I'm saying? I think we're fine. I think we're fucking fine. <laughs> Uh, straightrazors.com is uh, all you need for those perineum sunning sessions. Let's face it, you can't get uh, sunshine on your taint and asshole if there's hair on it. It's going to be blocking it. Therefore, you should shave up down there before you uh, go, what is it, the baby pose? 
A uh, happy baby. Happy baby, big baby cornrows. I don't know if it's a yoga pose or a sex pose. I can't remember. Ah, either way, they both sound fun. Can't remember. They both sound fun, don't they? Oh, boy. Hullabaloo. Hullabaloo. <laughs> they both sound fun. They both sound like a little dream. Um, go there. Get a kit for your mom or dad. Only if your mom's a Ukrainian dwarf. Have her shave that bush. She can get taken care of for life. If your dad has not talked to you, he will again. If you get him a kit for Christmas. Engrave his name on it. Put your name underneath it as, 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 and say, to my father from your son. You can get that, all that engraved on there. And, uh, and I think that will help your relationship. So do it. Uh, they got shampoos, beard oils, conditioners, uh, mustache, waxes. Go to straightrazors.com. Promo code REVOLUTION20% off. It's a big, big savings there. I use their, their smolder aftershave every day of my life. Use all their products. I love them. I love them, Jabes. Uh, what were you talking about? Some bullshit before we came on the show? What? You were popping all that yang <laughs> before we came on the show. You were like, man, I got some shit to talk about. Oh, no, I said. I got some things I want to flex on today. Well, I said I wanted to talk about the Peloton ad. Yeah. You want to get into it? That everyone's talking about. Have you seen it? Yeah. Have you seen the parodies? They're great. The parodies are Parody great. Nation yeah. is really making me happy today with this Peloton all these Peloton. So what was your sitch when you saw the Peloton ad? So the Peloton ad, the first you wanted thing one of you these think, things. Right, but the first thing you think is the husband surprises the wife yep. with an exercise bike. Yeah. Which might as well have just had a vacuum next to it and been like, clean the house more and lose weight. Although the lady in the ad is about 106 pounds maybe. Sure. Wet. Yeah. Thin as shit. Right, right. Right? So the husband is like, not good enough. I need you thinner. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need you to get in shape. And the second thing that happens is she gets on the bike, looks to the cameras, like taking a selfie, and she's like, I'm scared. It's my first ride. I'm so worried. But here we go. What are you scared of? Yep. It's a stationary bike. Fire. It won't. You're gonna stay in the same. But if your house is on fire, you're on you're on a stationary. Maybe bike. that's what you're she was scared anywhere. of. Yeah, yep. and Gotta then think about that. she like goes for six days, and sh- she's like six days in, like you know, are yep. you- can you believe it? I'm surprised or whatever. And then she like sits on the couch and like lovingly like looks at her husband, like, hey, what do you think? Yeah, and he's like, still, you're not thin enough. Get back, get back up there. Yeah. Um. So it's it was just really it was kind of tone deaf right the Uh, whole ad was very tone deaf yeah i love peloton i want one right but so i'm not saying like i don't want to ruin any chance of like a sponsorship but fuck you (laughs) you're stupid (laughs) you're stupid and dumb and i'll just go with uh what's the other brand nordic track oh yeah are they doing one too now yeah everyone's doing one now so i don't need to have a peloton Idiots. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the parodies are fucking great. Push ups. Somebody wrote. Is Peloton for poor people? Yeah. yeah. F- somebody wrote, uh, you might as well have just given your, your wife an extra small shirt and said, I hope you can fit in this. Hope you can for fit Christmas. into this when she is already like a double zero. Yep. Um, so there was, and the, the there was girl where, is very uh, fake, and it's just so stupid. It's it just was, a really stupid ad. Like, I'd rather have you silent and have it be an attainable thing, like where the bike is in a high rise New York apartment with well, they glass had that commercial. everywhere. Yeah, they That's had what that I'm saying. Ad, yeah. That was more, to me, more effective sure. than this bullshit of trying to be like, Peloton. It's for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're cool. It's like, yeah. no, dude, you're so out of touch. You're so in the New York high rise with the glass that you don't even know what a fucking good normal commercial would be. Yeah. Um, I, I There was one parody that I liked that was like another girl. He, the guy had gotten another girl and was just like, hey, you're going to you gonna give this a go? Or? Oh, yeah. Surprise. Yeah, because it starts with surprise. So that's always yep. like a good. And you're like, what? what? And he's just like, well, 
you know. The push-ups one is like a gay couple, and the guy opens up the door, and he's like, surprise, and it's just the floor, <laughs> and he just tells him to do a bunch of push-ups, and he like does the whole thing. Six days in, can you believe it? Boom, he runs into the wall, whatever. And then the <laughs> tagline is push-ups, Peloton for poor people. Um, there's a bunch of, basically, these parodies went up pretty quickly, which I love. Well, it's getting faster and faster now. Oh, dude, it's crazy. Like, they saw the ads, stuff. and then these people were making these parodies, like, overnight. So good. Yeah. Anyway, I love it. Yeah. Well, you know. Peloton, tone deaf as fuck. Tone deaf as fuck. I mean, again, I'll take one. But. <laughs> I'm not getting you one. Thank I you. I don't believe in working out inside your, like, a, you know, unless you have a your own personal gym downstairs mm-hmm. that is just designated as your gym. I don't believe in yeah, working because- out inside the house. Yeah, it stinks. would stink. Yep, it stinks. You mm-hmm. fucked up a room. Yep, and you're just like, all right, sweet. Now yeah, I'm now I'm gonna go sit in there and watch the Thanksgiving Day Parade after you just sweat it out. Yeah, exactly. All your fucking guts onto the floor. Shh. No, thank you. Yeah, I don't need that bullshit in my life. Mm-hmm. Go to the gym. You know, I think that that would be a great ad for one of those gyms where it's just like, hey man, why don't you get out of the house? Right. The way you don't have to deal with your fucking husband. Go to the gym. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't have to deal with your kids. You don't have to look around your house at the mess you don't want to clean up. Exactly. Just fucking go to the gym. <laughs> go to the gym. Surprise, right? Surprise. You just drive them to the gym. Surprise. Here we are. Yeah. Got you a gym membership. <laughs> so stupid. I, I urge you guys to watch both the ad and some of the parodies. It's pretty fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is pretty funny. Uh, breaking, we got some breaking news, breaking news. What's up? Kamala Harris just dropped out of the presidential uh, election. Gosh, are you serious? Right now. She's informing her staff right now, it says. Why? Um, she just couldn't, she knew Harris she couldn't Harris came into it. the race with uh, the highest expectations on her and the biggest entry into the race with 22,000 people at a rally in Oakland at the end of January. But it struggled with internal fighting and money um, that had almost completely dried up recently. Do you think the Tulsi Gabbard Rogan interview had anything to do with it? No. Um, I Because Tulsi was the one that came after her and poked holes in all of her, in her boat. She comes after her all the time, which... I'm just saying. And then she kills it on Rogan. I don't look, know if, there if had that was a gun the nail. Head, if, if a Democrat had to win this next election... For me, it'd be Tulsi Gabbard, but um, but uh, with Kamala Harris, I think I think this is genuine. I think this, you know, she just knew. You start looking at your polling numbers. She was she was around one two percent at that point, and it's tough. I think it must piss money her wise. Off yeah, and then going around to all of this shit. Um, we're, we have a campaign party tomorrow, but um, I've been getting a lot of pointers and. Um, messages from other people who have done it and run and what you have to do and why and all that stuff and uh this is on a local level i can't imagine on a national level where you've got to do fundraisers over and over again and you're just asking people for cash at what point and this is where i'll commend kamala harris on this at what point do you look at the polling numbers and be like man i am just taking people's money at this point simply because I can go another two months, three months. At what point do you just say, man, this is not worth it? It's just not, you're not going to do it. And again, like I said, it must piss her off that Biden as mentally gone, beaten and he's battered. He's running out of money as well. Yeah, but he's still in the lead. Like that must be like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, what do you want? He is and he isn't. I mean, look, I, I think... After these stumbles that Biden's made a lot recently, and we posted one on Drinking Bros. You'd think, Instagram. but yeah. Um, I, I just don't, I don't know. I don't know that he'll make it to the finish line. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, there's been some predictions recently that Michelle Obama's going to top in, which I w- would blow my mind. But um, she, I think she probably did the right thing. I think Cory Booker will be next. I think the other move that you could see with this and again, this is all happening live right Corey now. Cory so Booker's still in? He's still in. Yeah. There was an article, oh, too, about him, him and his weird relationship with Rosario Dawson. Weird relationship? I don't Why know. is it weird? Who knows? I think it's weird. I do, too. So everybody, I mean, a lot of people do. He seems, actually, I will say he seems like a good guy. Yes. 
Yeah, like, you know, b- and I'm sure he parties. Scenes, he probably he have a fucking seems beer with like that a dude. good yeah. guy. So, you know, I get it. Yeah. Um, but with, with uh, Kamala Harris, I, I think the other play that could be overlooked here is this would be a good VP candidate. Who? Kamala Harris. Is and you have he she needs to drop out in order for that to happen or I, I would say it, the more and more you attack the people in the lead, the less and less they are inclined to sure. hire you as VP. Sure. So the people that start bouncing now are the people that will usually pop up for it later. I said this a long a very long time ago. I said the only reason Cory Booker was running was so that he could be a VP. And because people do like him. Uh, um, he's a personable guy. And uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I think he's good at politics. Um, Cory Booker. I, I might not agree, obviously, with his politics. But I think he's, he's good at it and great with talking to people, you know, in a town hall setting and all that other stuff. Like, I've watched all of his shit. Um, with Kamala Harris, I mean, look, if you're Joe Biden, right, and your whole thing rests on the I'm Barack Obama's VP thing, wouldn't it behoove you to go out and get a black yes. candidate as your vice president, either I, a Cory Booker or a Kamala Harris? Yes, I would say um, I would say that Kamala Harris is not likable, unfortunately. I think um, a Cory Booker might work a little bit better for you but her her numbers and what happened to her her fall from grace is solely based on you know a personality and holes being poked in her her changing uh her, I agree. her stance on healthcare halfway through yep. i mean so her amazing fall i think uh would not speak to would not be good VP wise, and I think I well, I, you never know. I, to me, a VP is it's, just, it's a fucking worthless job, obviously, and uh, you need somebody safe in there and like somebody that that will do well with the pull well with the voters. I mean, you look at Buttigieg; he's having a very hard problem with black voters. I mean, it is non-existent. It is a fucking zero for that guy, right? Because he is the whitest dude on the face of the planet. Um, that would be a nice move. For him in particular, like sure. So I don't know, uh, but either way, I will say this: I, whether you like her or not, running for office is fucking hard. I commend her for at least dropping out at this point, so you're not blowing through millions and millions of dollars of other people's money just to stay in it. Uh, and I think it helps your party if you're able to see past your own bullshit and say, "All right, yeah, I cannot no. win this thing." That's true. Let's start giving the stage to people who can and try to figure this out because we are down to 11 and months that's more from today. F- for the good of the people. Yes. And that's how she would angle it. So, you know, maybe. Yeah. Um so I, you know, it, it is what it is, but you're right. I think this was her own undoing and uh nothing more than that. Um because I think I think it's fair to say she entered this race as a, as a front runner. Uh, she she did, and there's lots of uh, polling and all. Co- I mean, people can pinpoint the exact moment. I mean, she literally just ruined it, <laughs> ruined a insane lead. I mean, yeah, she was gonna be the person, right? I, but how many invitations have you gotten for oh the past God. like year, two years to go to Kamal? You know what I mean? Yeah, to go to her fundraisers, luncheons, so, everything, and like forever. I and knew she, and people were Hollywood really, was hoping for it. Yeah. Yes, people were backing her. People wanted her, but she just people wanted a, a female black president and in Hollywood. Um, yeah, and uh, they were amped, but she was just unlikable uh, on stage. There's nothing you can do about a, that. And, I mean, well, I will say on the first debate, she did, she did really well. I thought she won the first she, debate. Yeah, she did, except for once she had to go against people like Tulsi Gabbard that really, literally, were just going after her the whole time. You huh. find that oh shit, she does actually have some uh, flaws in her past as far as her policies and what she's done for prison reform and all of this shit. Yeah, uh, marijuana, everything else. Yeah, she fucks some people up. Yeah. Right? And then um, her changing her health care plan in the middle, I think, was the worst thing she could have done. So, you know. Yeah. She did it. Yeah. Herself. 
Um, but yeah, so she's she's gone. But that is uh, breaking news that just came in where I was just like, wow, boy. wow, wow, wow. We're giving you the, the hot the hot takes. Yeah, the, the hot, hot tracks life. right here, right near, right in your bee hole. Hot tracks through the forest. Yeah, um, I'm gonna get to uh, the revolutionary figure of the day, and uh, this is awesome, and I'm super stoked about it today because um, it is a friend and. Uh, uh, Ahmad, uh, Ahmad Best, um, who was uh, Jar Jar Binks in all of those movies. Ahmad Best? Yes. Okay. Um, I cast him in a bunch of my movies. He was in uh, FTR, American Badass, Pool Boy, I think one more. Um, either way, I did not. Jamie, are you in a Star Wars? Yep. Yeah. Um, so I, I, f- I figured, and this is why I'm asking you. Did you know who he, he was when I said that name? No, right? I didn't either. And I've told this story on the show before, and I talked about how sad it was. This is probably 100 episodes ago, maybe 150 episodes ago. Um, when we finished, because he came in and auditioned, I know I don't, I, I had seen the movie, but I don't know who's in that fucking costume. Um, and the voice is weird and everything else. For which costume? Jar Jar Binks. Okay. Um, that is the most hated character of all time in movie history. According to like a bunch of polls and mm-hmm. everything else, right? Mm-hmm. People hated him personally. They sent him awful letters, emails, you name it, across the board. Like he was suicidal for a while, and rightfully so, man. I don't know what happens if you play the most hated character ever in a movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't know it until we finished the day. I forget which movie it was. Um, we finished the day, and, and somebody was like, oh, man. I can't believe you had a Jar Jar Banks in the movie. And I was like, "What?" And he goes, "Yeah, uh, uh, I'm my best. Like that's that's Jar Jar Banks." And I was like, "Oh." And I was like, "Well, it could have been anybody underneath that fucking costume. I don't give a shit." Mm-hmm. Um, and I was, he was just really, a really, really funny mm-hmm. guy, outgoing, upbeat, all that other stuff. And um, I thought it was strange. And I walked away from that set that day, and I was like, "Man, people really fucking hate Jar Jar Banks." Like. Um, and then it, I kept reading these articles over the years, and then and the next movie came around. Like I wrote a role in there for him specifically because of how good he was in the movie before, right? And I'd gotten a chance to talk to him about it a little bit, and I said, "Hey, man, with regards to the Jar Jar Binks thing, like you understand that it's just fucking bullshit, right? Like it's not you personally. I didn't know that was you, mm-hmm. and I didn't care or whatever." And he was like, "Who said something to you?" And I was like, uh, it was one of the extras on the movie. And I was like, he goes, how do they know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's what I don't understand. Mm-hmm. And he goes, everybody knows. And he goes, they fucking hate it. And he's just like, I've had a really hard time with it. I've had a really hard time with life in general. And I was like, he goes, I really appreciate you doing these movies and, and all this stuff, right? Cut to I, today. I, and look, I haven't worked with him in, I don't know, fucking eight years at this point. You always wonder what happens with people because you don't, you don't really know. I read a lot. And uh, today... Uh, Disney Plus, um, actually, there's a, there's a Star Wars Jedi Temple Challenge. It's a new game show for kids, and it's going to be hosted by him on Disney Plus. Uh, and that's awesome. That is where all the news. What's the new Star Wars TV show, Jamie, that's on there now? Mandalorian. Mandalorian. It's dope. Everybody loves it. And to me, by doing this, this is a, a huge risk for Disney. Because of how many people hate this fucking character. But it's a great move because he's, to my opinion, because he's a great guy and he's really funny and really engaging. And like, to me, he could be, he could be huge. Um, anyways, to read this today at least gives me hope and something of like, all right, thank God, man, because that guy could have been fucking ruined. Yeah. Now at least you're going to put him on. Back in that world, back with kids, back with everyone else, and give him a shot at redemption. And uh, he did not deserve the fucking hatred for that. But, like, goddamn, imagine. And this is why I said revolutionary. Imagine being voted the worst character in a movie in history. What do you do if, if you're an actor and that's your did life? you get paid a lot? Um, that would, yes, that yes. Would well, help. here's the thing. Yes and no. It, that That is one of those gigs that is... Enough for four or five years to live on, mm-hmm. but not you a have lifetime. You get other jobs, yeah. And there was no more Jar Jar Binks. Right. And, you know, the, look, the indie movies I put him in didn't pay shit. Right. 
you know. Um, so I don't know. Um, but he was a, such a great, positive person. And yeah, he was amazing. I think you said something to him in a restaurant one night about FDR American Badass. Was he um, the one that had the... Had the chalkboard. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, and him. he loved you. But he's, how great was that guy? Yeah. Would you have known that was, J you, that was Jar Jar Banks at that restaurant that night? No, and I only... Uh, he was pretty uh, surprised that I even knew who he was. And was like, hey, do you know, you know, yeah, Ross yeah. Patterson, whatever. And he's like, oh, yeah. Rah, rah. Like, I think he probably, if I was looking at him, was like, oh, God. Yeah. She knows or something. I, I don't know. I don't know how people would know. But I thought you were going to make the revolutionary figure me for Thanksgiving dinner. But no, not at all. Okay. Not at all, Jesse. Um, you forgot so gravy I'm just this like year. Thro I'm like thrown you off. Forgot a gravy bit. this year. So uh, you're learning. You're learning. Uh, no, but you you uh, you did smoke the fuck out of that turkey. That was Smoked the best turkey. Tasting These are the things I made that, that by myself, best. and I want to let you know that he's complaining about gravy. Well, so smoked a turkey by myself. Mm -hmm. Green bean casserole from scratch. Nothing from a can. Everything fantastic. By the way, roasted corn. Amazing. Smashed potatoes. Great. Those were it was, uh, amazing across Pecan the board. Pecan pie. Pretty good. Mac and cheese. It's for the kids. For the kids. I made all of this by myself. Yep. Um, what is the one thing that goes on Thanksgiving? And this is what I got. Dinner. So I just want to give you a little window into the hell that is my <laughs> life sometimes. <laughs> like, that no matter what I do. Not true. There's still going to be a complaint from young Ross. The over people, here. So the people know. It by is the way. what it, I praise it you. It is what it is. All the time, I praise you all the time. Mm. You cannot forget gravy at Thanksgiving. You cannot, and here's why. I, I've I've determined why this is right. You smoke the turkey. That was the best tasting turkey I've ever had in my life. You knocked it out of the park, for real. That was that was amazing. We've had it for days afterwards leftovers i usually never eat turkey leftovers mm -hmm. i'm never one of those guys who's like oh turkey it's it's a dry meat to mm -hmm. me um you've smoked it it is amazing you can still taste it the smoke in there right mm -hmm. days later of those leftovers where you're mm -hmm. like oh man that's amazing mm -hmm. but it's still turkey sure turkey will always always in my honest opinion i like to get yours at home always require gravy till the end of the earth well, I'm not doing it next year, so. Who's not doing it? Me. Why? So here's what happened. I'm not doing Thanksgiving next year. Let me. Oh, that's right, because we're going to your parents. Yeah. So your, dad, your dad's going to. Your dad had amazing gravy. Here's the weird thing. My dad will do gravy. We He did, he did gravy two years ago. Uh, the weirdest thing about it was the next day, and I was like, hey, I'd like to have some leftovers. And I was like, I'm going to stop and get some gravy. And you were like, I can make it. You made the best gravy that I've ever had. And it was like. You had that all along in your back pocket, and you just decided not to do it. Well, I think, no, I didn't decide. I was doing, like, a lot of things, like, a lot. The gravy you made was incredible, and it was, was so good. I was just doing too many clearly things. clearly you had and done I'm it a million times. And I'm going to tell you I'm not going to do it again. What? The gravy? All of it. I did too many things, and the uh, attitude that I got at the table, I'm not doing it again. So my dad can do it. Your mom can do it. I'm not doing that that I'll was cook. my last that was my last one okay i'll cook so i'll do, I'll, I'll cook thanksgiving well your dad's doing it next year I'll do, I'll do the year after okay um sounds good yeah i enjoy cooking i like okay. it the only thing that i can't do uh i will say is uh probably the the, the pecan pie the pies are tough because as a dude you don't grow up making pies mm -hmm. so that's not ever in the arsenal like a pie is never in the arsenal mm -hmm. Um, for a dude, I don't know a lot of dudes out there who are pie, mm -hmm. pie guys. Right. But the rest of it, I can, I, I got. I'm down for it. Cool. For sure. The gravy recipe, though, I will want, because it was better than my right. grandfather's, and that was my favorite for a long time. Um, but your gravy beat it, which made me even more pissed because it was like, dude, you were sitting on that the whole time. Come on, James, you're sitting on that gold the whole time. I don't remember it, so I won't be able to give that to you. Sorry. Are you being serious? Mm-hmm. You're going to have to just figure it out. You, <laughs> it, you've you made it in like <laughs> 10 minutes. I know. 
Yeah. Rough. All right. Rough. 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 All right. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. I, gra- I can find a gravy online. Totally. I can, f- I can yeah, find I can a totally, gravy Totally. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. You're and good. Just know if you come to the Patterson household in two years, now this next year because one of your dads. Right. He takes pride in his Thanksgiving. So does your brother. Um, two years, you will be slathered in gravy. <laughs> Blown you away by the gravy. Bathing in it. Bathing I will have in so gravy. much fucking gravy. I will have a goddamn boat pulled through the front door of the house. And you'll be like, oh my God, did a boat just crash in your house? Yes. A it's gravy a gravy boat. boat. Yeah. And it's filled with Lamo, gravy. Lamo. Mm-hmm. Boom. I'll pull out a little wine cork. It'll be an older type boat. And it just. Sure. Oh. oh. Your yeah. little cup will run us over with gravy. <laughs> know that when you come to my house. You're, you're, you're going to have to sit down at the dinner table with a towel wrap around you. Like you're fat Joe. There's going to be so much gravy. You're going to be sweating, patting Looking things down. Looking forward to it. Looking Woo. forward to it. There'll be gravy everywhere. Okay. Uh, it's going to be like a fucking Gallagher concert. There's going to be gravy all over. You're going to have to put some plastic all over yourself and the chairs. You're gonna be exp- there's going to be an explosion of gravy everywhere. What if I did that? What if I hollowed out a watermelon, filled it up with gravy, and then put it on the, the Thanksgiving table and Oof. just bashed it in with a wooden... And it just all exploded everywhere. Yes. That'd That's cool. the gravy. Then you can just grab your chicken and then, and just, or your turkey and just wipe it off your chest. You should be wearing plastic like a poncho. Right. Just wipe it off the poncho and eat it. Oh... I'm going to be the Gallagher gravy. Two years. Fuck, I'm excited. Uh, James, fun show. Uh, R.I.P. Kamala Harris. Sorry, not rest in peace. Rest in V. Maybe R.I.V.P. Rest in vice president. There you go. I like it's, that. I mean, she's not gonna, they're not going to win, but. Sure. Uh, you, there is going to be a ticket at some point. So there we'll you see. go. I don't know who the VP is. Uh, for Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I'm Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.